Well, thank you very much, John, and thank all of you for inviting me here. I'm going to talk about some of the findings of the book that uh, John uh, showed us, which really thinks about UC system, UC campuses, and their uh, particular in regional areas and industrial clusters. So I'm going to talk just very briefly about California, which is really becoming a knowledge commercialization uh, economy. And I'll talk very briefly about the university industry relations, universities, local industrial clusters, and a few final thoughts. This is patents, USPTO patents. The yellow gold California is growing as a percentage of US patents. International is growing, California is growing, and generally speaking, most of the other states outside of Massachusetts are declining. This is venture capital disbursements. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the red is Silicon Valley. It's very hard to see Southern California, but Southern California together is about the fifth uh, largest region for venture capital. 40% of all venture capital is invested in California. Just to give you an idea of how central we, uh, commercialization of knowledge is to this uh, state. Now, the benefits that the university provides flow essentially from the core missions, research and teaching. And research and teaching dwarf all other formal technology transfer uh, mechanisms and activities. And I think we always need to keep that in mind and we're talking to the legislature or whoever else, we need to emphasize that over and over. And in many ways, this is very hard to measure. Universities are often the largest employers in their regions. And the interesting thing is they're not going offshore. Right, so that is one difference, right? Any firm can go offshore, probably Berkeley is not closing and going to move. Uh, licensing income, we think of technology transfer, uh, technology licensing offices. Licensing income is far less than sponsored research and philanthropy. So when we hear about licensing income is going to save the university, it just can't. There's not enough money there. And direct industrial support for research is small and not likely to get that much larger. So essentially, what, are, what is research based on? It's based on the federal government and institutional funds and everything else, state, industry, et cetera, are far smaller. So those are sort of some big facts about tech transfer and the impact that universities have. So universities and local industrial clusters, I'm going to talk about that because I think that's where we really have seen universities have major impacts on their particular regions. And I'm going to talk about the University of California, but you could look at the privates also. Here is just a diagram I put together of UC Berkeley EECS professors and the elect, uh, electronic design uh, automation industry. And what you have is the faculty on top. You have in the red, the little red are graduates of UC Berkeley that were founders of companies. The professors are on the outside and their linkages, Alberto San Giovanni Vincentelli as uh, Solomon Design Associates, which becomes Cadence, et cetera. What I'm trying to give you is just a picture of how that interaction between in this particular space, and in my book, we describe it in a number of other in industrial sectors in EECS at Berkeley, have interacted with the local region of Silicon Valley. It's kind of a forgotten story that Berkeley was a very important part of the development of Silicon Valley. It's just the professors moved 50 miles down. So. Uh, so anyway, so I think that is one thing. I, UCSD, this is the Hybertech tree. Hybertech comes out of UCSD, and all of those firms are from Hybertech employees who started further firms. Now, this only goes through 1996. There are children, uh, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren that have actually made uh, San Diego area, one of the three centers of the world in biotech. The Bay Area is the other one, which is, of course, a Berkeley UCSF uh, creation. And Boston is, of course, the Harvard MIT creation. So these are, you can directly link these, and you can link people moving down through the, uh, working at one firm, starting a new firm, interacting with the university, uh, helping technology move out. 
Now, we talked about Silicon Valley, we talked about San Diego, but the best valley of all is Napa Valley. I'm from UC Davis, right? Make your money in San Diego or in uh, Silicon Valley and then waste it, uh, lose it in uh, the Napa Valley, right? By making wine that you'll never make any money on. Okay, so what I'm just, well, I'm not gonna go through all this, but what's very interesting, if you look over the 50 to 60 years of Napa in the post-war period after Prohibition. UC Davis at the beginning actually ran the state fair and the tasting, right? But of course today that's not needed anymore and what I, what you go, if you go down through this, what you see is as the industry became more capable, they drove the university to become more capable and the university moved more on the science side. But the other thing that the university did is 80% of the Napa winemakers have a UC Davis connection, right? So if you enjoy the wine, think about UC Davis. If you're from the College of Ag like me, what you also say is please give me a discount, and they do. So that's the only way a UC Davis professor can afford Napa wine anymore. <laughs> so what should we think about here? We should think about instead of commercialization, what we've seen in the very successful interactions between university and the commercial space has been engagement and the importance of bi-directionality, information flowing back and forth and reinforcing the university and also reinforcing industry. People as conduits. People are the conduit through which knowledge moves out. It's not only graduate students, it's professors, but often it can be ex-graduate students coming back to work in the lab, et cetera, et cetera. But I think if we think about it that way, we can get a better picture of how this really works. Porous boundaries, right? I mean, these institutions that are very interactive with their local region have porous boundaries such that things can move back and forth. Consulting is learning, right? I mean, consulting is also a learning process where, whereby you're, in, you're a professor, you're in industry, and you're learning through consulting about the kinds of problems. And particularly when we're talking about cutting edge industries, they have cutting edge scientific problems. It's not always that way, but many times it's that way. The other thing that's important to understand is different disciplines have different transfer dynamics, right? So ICT and software are going to look different from biotech, which is going to look different from agriculture and wine, or, you know, if you think about SAS, the statistics company, that started as a small cons consulting firm, so North Carolina spinoff, right, that has now become a major contributor to the North Carolina community. So I think as we think about this, we need to think about engagement and interaction. So what are the key takeaways? I think one of the key takeaways, they wanted us to talk about economics here, but uh, is that we cannot measure the relationship, we can measure certain things. We measure startups, we measure patents, we can measure income in some way, but we can't measure the complexity of the interaction of a great university and an industrial cluster that is very successful. And then I think this was from the first thing, is California and the University of California has built uh, the finest public university system in the world. And what we see is the great universities are actually interacting with their region, even as they're creating global class knowledge. And I think those are the two takeaways that I've taken from uh, our research with Dave Mowry that resulted in this book. And with that, I'll end. Thank you.